developed this web seminar as an introductory course to discuss the basic concept of good clinical practice, or GCP as we affectionately refer to it. And more recently, we've added some letters to that to make it be GCPE6R2, which is a real tongue twister. It's the first time that the International Conference on Harmonization has been revised since the late 90s. So that's why the R2 uh, is at the end of this. If you have any books that have just GCPE6, you want to um, get rid of those and move on to the R2 version because the R, the other one didn't know any nomenclature after the after the GCP part, and it's outdated. So as of last, um, we're now using the R2 version. So you want to make sure that you get the updated. Um, the update uh, includes a lot more about risk management and submissions, like, uh, case report forms, and things of that nature. So more of the electronics, the tech, um, and the risk-based concept have been incorporated now into the, the current. Um, so just make sure you have that. The common elements of the E6 include the principles as uh, itemized in the ICH guidelines. And these are principles that are used globally for all of our clinical trials, and they're embraced by the FDA in our law for the United States studies, which is known as the Code of Federal Regulations. The Code of Federal Regulations is the law in the United States, and the ICH is a guideline for us here. Although they're not spelled out in the document, FDA encourages us to realize the principles of ICH are relevant for us. As we get started, we'll look at the learning objectives that we set forth for today and want you to chat to all participants that's the easiest way uh, to get it on, on board for us. If I hit upon anything that you're not familiar with or want additional information about, we have a lot of abbreviations and acronyms in the industry, and I'll be happy to decipher any of those that might not be known. So our learning uh, observations today will be to talk about the goals of good clinical practice, why we have them. We'll discuss the various regulations that affect the drug, the medical device, and the biologic investigational products related to good clinical practice. We're going to recognize the mutual accountability and the responsibilities for each of the stakeholders, the sponsor, the investigator, the IRB and IEC, and the regulatory authority. Everybody has a job to do, but we also have a lot of mutual accountability here. We work together very often. We're going to apply the principles then of ICH, which is the International Council for Harmonization. If you have old books, it will also say International Conference on Harmonization. Those are outdated. The terminology has been updated to be International Council for Harmonization. And we'll talk about those principles which affect quality research studies to ensure compliance. Keep in mind as we go through this that the mission of FDA is to protect the right safety and well-being of subjects. So anything that the FDA is doing revolves around the subject. The subject always comes first. That's the main mission for FDA. If anything that we do affects the subject, that's where they're going to go for. They're also ensuring compliance so that the data that we collect is credible to allow the regulatory agencies to assess whether the product that we're testing is safe and effective, and should they then approve it. So let's look at what the definition then is of good clinical practice. It's a standard for just about everything we do. When you look here, it starts right out with designing the study, conducting the study, performing the study. So you can see already we've involved the sponsor right up in the designing part and the conducting part. In performing, it would be the sponsor as well as the site. In terms of monitoring, how we're doing that, that might be involve a CRO. Auditing the project, that could be the sponsor or a third party representing that sponsor. How we record the data, that could be the site or how we're re recording anything, uh, the sponsor side, all of our communication uh, with the site or with the IRB or with the FDA. How we analyze the data from the study, so obviously the biostatistician, and how it's all reported. So that's bringing in the investigator, it's bringing in the, possibly a CRO, the sponsor reporting to the FDA. How it's all reported so that we provide assurance 
to the agency that the data can be trusted and the re results are credible. They're accurate. We've double-checked them as needed. We believe in them and that we've protected the rights, the safety, the integrity, and the confidentiality of the trial subjects. That means we're not bringing in any documents that have the patient's name on them to the sponsor. We're going to have them coded. And that's going to be in the informed consent form as well as in the protocol to tell everybody that we are not going to be logging in anyone by name. It's all going to be confidential. The investigator will have the name of the people, obviously. And access to the data will be done by the monitor, by an auditor, perhaps by the FDA or other regulatory agency. But the names will not come into the sponsor so that we will never be able to publicize who was on the sponsor.